Yeah, thanks, Helen, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, are you seeing my screen now? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, today I'm just going to talk about um, the sustainable extraction of rare earth elements from the known um, Queensland deposits. So I'm just going to give you a, um, like a background of how we came up with this project. Um, so we have realized the potential of Queensland for rare earth resources. However, unlike the common base and precious metals, the processing and extraction of these rare earth um, minerals are not well understood. So this discourages explorers from entering um, the rare earth um, deposit discovery and much more into development of these deposits. So with the rare earth um, becoming critical in various um, applications to meet the demand for greener um, economy, there is then a need to better understand the best and the most sustainable alternatives for extraction of rare earths from known deposits. And um, perhaps this is an area where Queensland can um, gain significantly by processing its um, rare earth um, resources. So our project, really the ultimate aim of this is to provide processing alternatives and their high level economics for the main styles of rare earth mineralization in Queensland. And also um, the project aims to, to be able to do that one, of course, to develop an understanding the mineralogy and also the metallurgy of the Queensland's um, rare earth mineralization, and also to understand and document the possible methods for extraction of rare earth metals from various ore types. So to be able to achieve that one, um, several um, research groups within the University of Queensland are working in this project, from the Sustainable Minerals Institute, the School of Earth and Environmental Sciences, and also from the School of Chemical Engineering. So there are more, um, four, I should say, four main components of the project. The first one being is a, a literature review type of thing wherein we obtain an overview of the known um, rare earth mineralization styles in Queensland, which then provides us the basis to identify um, which ore type are we going to use for this project. And then the collected um, ore samples will then undergo geochemical and mineralogical characterization that is to give us a thorough understanding of the nature of the currents of the rare earths in the ore that would um, help us to prepare, to plan, and also to set up our comprehensive testing. So for the test, as this is a, about um, the extraction of rare earths, we are applying or we are looking at several techniques of extracting rare earths. And three of them, so the first one is hydrometallurgy, or if you want to call it leaching, which is in fact the current um, approach now of um, extracting rare earth. And then we are also looking at um, new uh, technologies, which are the bio-leaching and also the phyto extraction. So aside from these three, if there is a need, then we will also conduct a pre-concentration of the ore. All right, so this map just shows us some of the known um, rare earth deposits found in Queensland. And the main um, deposit types that are found in Queensland are mainly the um, SCARN and IOCG in the Mount Isa district, and also um, some laterites in the Greenville region. These are mostly associated with the nickel and cobalt. We also have some phosphorite um, associated deposits in the Georgina Basin, and also the mineral sands along the coast and most of them are in the southeast of Queensland. And currently, these ones are at the moment not accessible as most of them are in the conservation reserves. However, in the early 19, in the early days, I think as early as in the 1950s, Australia was one of the major uh, producer of rare earth from monazite production. And in the 1980s, Australia became um, the, the leading producer of, um, of monazite. But then when the regulations became stricter, and also there was a drop in the global demand for rare earth. So these operations stopped. And the primary um, rare earth minerals found in these deposits are um, monazite, which is enriched with the light rare earths. And then we also have the xenotime, which is an yttrium phosphate. And this one is an important um, economic source for the heavy rare earths. And there is also, as a primary um, rare earth bearing mineral, the alanite and also the apatite. So this um, table, um, it shows um, a summary of just some of the known um, rare earth deposits in Queensland. Um, the Milo deposit, this is 
which is an IOCG in the Mount Isa region. And this one's actually, there are two uh, mineralizations that are in, in this area. There's the um, rare earth ore and also um, the copper ore. And the Corella deposit, which is a phosphate and ethereum deposit. And this one is um, enriched with um, heavy rare earth, which is hosted primarily in Xenotime. Now the Lucknow and Kokomo, um, these are both in the Greenville region and both of these are um, scandium nickel cobalt um, laterites. And according to Metallica Minerals, um, they were able to recover about 90% of scandium um, oxide from these deposits during their feasibility study. And of course, we have um, the Mary Kathleen, where rare earths were found both in the original deposit as well as in the tailings, and mostly it's lanthanum and cerium. And these are hosted primarily in alanite, and there are also um, some traces of stilvalite and apatite. The Aline Dorothy, this is a multi-element um, scarring deposit in the south of um, Mary Kathleen, and it shares uh, many similar characteristics as the Mary Kathleen, and its primary um, rare earth bearing mineral is alanite. Now, as you can see in this table, uh, we've listed here peak range volcanics, however, that's not yet defined as a resource, but it can have the potential to be a high tonnage and low grade um, rare earth um, resource. And I guess there's not a lot of studies yet conducted in this, in this um, area. In fact, the information that we got from here is from the work of Ross and Carl. And I see that um, they're gonna give, um, they're gonna present on this area later on, so we'll know more about that. So the processing of rare earths, it's actually um, complex and that depends on the characteristics of the ore. There are various um, processing technologies or processing routes that can be applicable. But to give you a simplified version of the processing flow, so we have here the ore, it will first undergo um, pre-concentration. And this is just the physical separation of the rare earth minerals from the other minerals in the ore. That is to produce a rare earth concentrate that is suitable for extraction. Now in this stage, um, it includes um, chemical treatments to then extract or to recover the metal from the concentrate. So this is to give you an example of a typical um, processing route. This is from Mount Weld in um, Western Australia. And this is owned by an Australian company, the Linus Corporation. So Mount Weld, um, in fact, um, it has four deposits, but their important, uh, most important rare earth resource is the central lanthanide deposit, which is a carbonatite associated deposit. And Linus um, reported that they have, in fact, the highest um, rare earth um, grade deposit. And also their operation or their processing happens in two locations. Their concentrator is um, located in Western Australia and their um, extraction facility is located in Malaysia. So in their concentrator, the ore, it first undergoes on crushing and grinding, reduce the size of the particles, which will then um, proceed to flotation. So in here in flotation, they recover um, the rare earth minerals and it will then undergo filtration, which will produce a concentrate that contains about 40% of rare earth minerals. And this concentrate will be shipped to Malaysia in their um, extraction facility. And first, their concentrate will be mixed with um, sulfuric acid that will be baked at about um, 500 degrees Celsius. So in here in baking, what they're doing is to remove the carbon dioxide and the other um, gases in the ore and then it will undergo water leach, that is to leach the rare earths, and will undergo um, filtration to remove the solid waste. So the rare earths now will be in the solution. And this solution will undergo a purification by the addition of ammonia and magnesium hydroxide. After that, it will undergo another um, filtration. And after that, will undergo a solvent extraction. So solvent extraction, this is actually a hydrometallurgical process of purification where the metal 
is um, recovered from the solution based on its relative um, solubility between two immiscible liquids. So in this solvent extraction, what's happening here is that for month, well, they are removing the gypsum and also the magnesium um, rich gypsum. So what's left is the solution with the rare earths. And that solution will again undergo another precipitation and another filtration into um, product finishing, which is a uh, refining to produce a final product in the form of rare earth oxide with um, 95 to 99.999% um, purity. And Linus um, reported that um, they produce 22,000 tons of this product per year. Now, this is um, another example of a processing route. This is from Bayan Obo in um, Inner Mongolia. And this is the world's biggest um, rare earth mine, both in terms of reserve and by production. And this is also a carbonatite associated deposit. And it's primarily an iron, iron mine, but with REE as their byproduct. So in their concentrator, what is being fed is the tails from the iron processing plant. So these tails will undergo crushing again and grinding into about um, 40 microns. And those particles will undergo a um, gravity concentration and then on to magnetic separation. Where in this, um, in this part, the magnetic separation, they're removing the magnetite and also the hematite. And so the rare earths, um, they report to the non-magnetics, which will undergo flotation. So in this flotation, um, it produces tails that still contains niobium and that actually goes to uh, their niobium um, extraction plant. And then the concentrate, which primarily contains the, um, the basnesite, will undergo um, gravity concentration to produce the final um, basnesite concentrate. Now, this concentrate will also undergo um, baking at about 500 degrees Celsius. And similarly to the mount. Well, in here, it removes the precipitation. And this um, precipitation, um, it precipitates the, the rare earths in sulfates form. And then this one um, will be converted into hydroxides. And from there, it will undergo another leaching, but with hydrochloric acid. And this will now produce their final products, the uh, rare earths in chloride form. So these um, flow sheets that I've showed you, this is just to illustrate how complex is the processing route for rare earths. So in our project, aside from the typical um, hydrometallurgy, so both of those are hydrometallurgical processes. So in our project, aside from that, we are also looking at um, alternative technologies such as bioleaching and also a phyto extraction. So phyto extraction, well, um, I'm not the expert in this, and I might not be able to give justice to this one, but just to give you a brief explanation of what phyto extraction is. Essentially, it involves the use of plants. Uh, that's what they call um, the hyperaccumulator plants, which essentially will extract the metals from unconventional resources. And that includes low-grade ores and mining waste. And what's good about this is that once the plant has extracted the metal, for example, in this illustration from the soil, the metal cannot escape. So this plant here now becomes the bio ore that will undergo further processing to extract the rare earths from the plants. So this um, photo here is just an example of it's uh, showing you a leaf of a fern, so it's a fern leaf from a synchrotron micro XRF um, analysis that shows the accumulated um, rare earths in the leaves. In this one, we are also able to map these rare earth elements in the different parts of the leaf, such as, as you can see here, the blue one is actually the cerium. Now, for bioleaching, what happens here is that you have a bacteria that would catalyze the mineral. 
And this catalysis will bring about a redox reaction. And this reaction, apart from giving energy to the bacteria, would also generate the metal. So in um, rare earth processing, in rare earth recovery, what we are targeting are the ore specific biogeochemical processes. Processes. So for example, in a phosphorite deposit, such as Ardmore and the phosphate hill, if we have here a um, rare, oops, sorry, rare earth um, bearing phosphate, what happens is that the bacteria will utilize the phosphate so that phosphate now becomes the, myo, the biomass freeing or liberating the rare earth metals. So that's how we recover um, the metal from there. So this photo here, again, I'm not the expert um, in this one. So my apologies to our colleague Gordon. This is from his work. But um, what this um, photo shows are some gold grains. And this rod shaped like thing here are the bacteria. And as you can see also, there are this like a network of wires, which seem to be beaded with gold grains. And if you look closely, you zoom in. So this is the bacteria. And we have here the network of wires, or whatever you call them. And as this bacteria emits electrons away from, from the cell, that actually um, causes uh, precipitation of the gold in this network of wires. And the third um, process, hydrometallurgy, as I've mentioned before, this is a mature process for um, rare earth um, extraction. And this is applicable to both the primary and secondary resources. So in the project, what we are looking at is to look at the most um, suitable, the most sustainable um, hydrometallurgical process to extract the rare earths from these um, Queensland ore types. And we have the facility at UQ to conduct laboratory scale leaching, as well as laboratory scale um, solid, solid phase characterization. So where are we now in terms of the project? So we have obtained an overview now of the um, rare earth mineralization styles in Queensland. And we have also identified the ore types that we will use. Um, these are potentially um, the uh, Mary Kathleen tailings, um, the phosphate hill, and also from Ardmore. And we're in fact um, waiting for the arrival of Mary Kathleen tailings here in Brisbane. And um, these samples will be um, um, characterized. So I guess that's all about that I can say about the project. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kate. Does any, I think we've got a few questions for Kate. Uh, we've got a couple of questions about the presentations um, and we are making everything available on a, uh, video, so we are recording the session. Um, the presentations aren't necessarily extractable from that video in terms of a PowerPoint, but we can certainly send them to you. Um, it would be really good to see the answers for the questions above, so could the speakers reply with their answers? So if you type the answer. Um, Roberto has a question for Kate. Is there any recommended plant for phyto extraction so it can be used in mine reclamation. Um, yeah, so I'm not really the expert on that, but yes, so in fact, uh, well, phyto extraction is um, extensively being carried out now, not in Australia though, but in other parts of the world in, um, in China. But here, according to my, to my colleagues, um, phyto extraction can be applicable to um, mine weights such as in the Mary Kathleen um, tailings. So, Maybe okay. you uh, can, can, can add more to that. I, I'll just add, add a tiny bit more, and that is to say that the, the general approach that Anthony van der Ant and Philip Nkrumah and team do to, to actually identify which plants are, are likely to be amenable is to go to that site and look for ones mm -hmm. that are already growing locally. So it's not something where you, where you just go in and say, oh, I've got this plant that we know is takes up rare earths and, and use that. It's much more to identify plants that are already growing in the area and, and identi identify the ones that are most efficient hyper, hyper accumulators. 
I have another question for Kate. What bacteria are you using in your experiments for bioleaching? Are they indigenous or artificial? I think they are the, that would be a question for Gordon, but I think they are indigenous um, bacteria. Indigenous, okay. All right, thank you.